this is a fact, that uh, there are 140 moons in our solar system. I don't think that this is a coincidence. Any questions at this point? <laughs> what else do we have here? The first ever PowerPoint presentation of a PowerPoint logo. Bring that up. This is the first time I've ever done PowerPoint, by the way. So it took a lot of preparation for me to do this. Um, what's next? What is that? Oh, look, a quote by the Buddha. Um, so this is a very weird situation that I find myself in. Um, here I am, I was asked to come speak at South by Southwest Interactive. I love the great city of Austin. I love the great convention of South by Southwest. It's really just a, just a fantastic cultural thing. It's really one of the greatest things that the United States has going for it. But here I am, I'm this weird um, actor guy known for playing dysfunctional characters with strange haircuts and you know, tweeting the first thing that pops into his mind when he sits down to take a dump. And here I am speaking to you guys. You guys are computer geniuses, right? You guys have your web designers and branding experts and social networkers and like, what do I have to possibly <laughs> impart to you all today? This was a very uh, a strange dilemma. I felt an enormous amount of pressure to speak to the web in such a way that uh, I would uh, enlighten your souls in some profound way and unlock the, the secrets of our, of our culture, like, like Malcolm Gladwell. I even thought about making myself a, a gigantic wig out of my own pubic hair, kind of <laughs> like he has. And, um, <laughs> But um, it's not my pubic hair. I don't know who's he used for that. And I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about, because a lot of you know I have this website and brand, Soul Pancake. It's a website, and it's a best-selling book. It's a brand. We're now we're moving into production. There's a lot of different aspects to it. And I was thinking, like, what, what am I going to say? I'm not just here to, like, plug our our little measly, dumb website to you guys. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense. And then I was really thinking about the founding of Soul Pancake. I was thinking about my life's journey. And, and then I found a correlation, which is, you know, my life has had an incredible journey. Um, it's been an artistic journey, certainly, from starting out uh, as an actor and an artist and doing experimental theater in downtown New York City. Uh, to being uh, the incredibly successful, handsome actor you see before you right now. And um, I, I also had an incredible spiritual journey through my life and a philosophical journey as well. And that's what Soul Pancake is all about. It's about all of these things. Soul Pancake is about the journey, the journey that we all take as human beings, the journey, the spiritual, philosophical, and artistic or creative journeys that we all take. And so I thought, well, that's, that's it right there. That's what Soul Pancake is about, and I've had an incredible journey, so that's really what I'm gonna speak to you about. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey, and uh, I'm gonna stop saying the word journey, because I keep thinking about the rock band. <laughs> and then I was gonna sing, I, was, I, I couldn't think of a journey song. <laughs> when the don't stop. What was the name of that? My wife said, what was that Journey cover band we went and saw? Was it m More Than a Feeling? No, that would be a Boston cover band. <laughs> Wheel in the Sky. Oh, Don't Stop Believing? What was the name of the cover band we saw? Journey cover band, it was awesome. Um, okay. So let's get started. Um, here's a quote by the Buddha. Maybe we can talk about this later. Uh, I'm going to talk about some aspects having to do with spirituality, which you'd never expect to talk about uh, at a uh, at an interactive web conference. Let's see what else we have here on my PowerPoint. Oh, <laughs> this is a baby monkey riding a boar. Um, so, a lot of you. Um, and by the way, if you like that one, there's a great YouTube video of a hippopotamus having diarrhea. I'm not going to show it to you here, but just look it up later on. It's, it's, it's hysterical. Anywho, 
my history of the internet. Like, a lot of you will, are not gonna believe this. I'm 46 years old. I know, what, what, that's crazy, no way. He looks so young, he looks so good for his age, and it's true, but I am 46 years old. So a lot of you don't remember this. I was around for the dawn of the computer age and of the internet, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a crazy history. I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit. So here's the deal. Uh, the, I remember in 1993, my wife and I bought our first computer. It was a used laptop. We got it off of um, a, a message board in a coffee shop in New York City, and it was $600. I think it had 10 megabytes of memory, and it was a little, a little laptop, and um, it, it had one program on it, um, WordStar. WordStar was at one, it's the MySpace of word processing programs. And at one point it was the most popular, number one, it had $70 million in sales per year, uh, word processing program, and that's the only thing that was on my computer. And uh, interesting fact, George R. R. Martin of Game of Thrones still writes on WordStar. He's a true story, he creates really intricate, beautiful, deep, dark characters, and then inexplicably kills them. <laughs> on WordStar. <laughs> George R.R. R. Martin joke. <laughs> so I was going to write the Great American Novel on this laptop. It didn't, it didn't happen. I didn't really write much of anything. But we realized we needed a printer, so we went to the same cork board and tore up another ad, and for $250 we got a one of those printers that had spokes, like you needed to have paper on reels with holes dotted in the side and go <laughs> It was like circa from NASA circa 1979. Like it was, it was crazy, we had one of those. And uh, I was rather prescient, I made some artwork uh, on set printer. This is, we're talking a long time ago now. <laughs> And then we realized that there was this new miracle that was happening called the internet. So we got a, a modem, a dial-up modem that we got. And to go along with said modem, we got all these wonderful things started arriving in the mail. <laughs> Remember that? Just close your eyes. It takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the miracle of the internet. Six, you six can K bar, nice. From Pakistan to, to the Congo and Belgium, and everyone was going to be united and brought together, and all you had to do was listen to. So, um, anyway, so yeah, we got on the internet. What, what happened? Uh, I was um, AOL, that was my first uh, web page. They still make all their money from old people that don't know that you don't have to pay for email anymore. It's true. It's a true story. Um, what did I discover? One of the first things I discovered on the internet was uh, uh, Yahoo Chess, and I got my rating up to 1500, which was I was pretty excited about. Challenge anybody here. Boom. Um, I lost five months of my life to Minesweeper. That was a very sad time. Um, a message boards, that was a big phenomenon. Remember message boards? Everyone leaving. And I'm pretty sure, uh, I, I left a really nasty a message about George W. Bush uh, that I'm pretty, pretty sure changed the entire political landscape of the country. Um, come on, it was a little funnier than that. <laughs> uh, search engines, remember search engines? I was starting to be an actor in LA when I discovered uh, the miracle of Googling myself, although back then it was I, I would ask Jeeves about myself um, and Alta Vista myself. Um, and I remember I did this episode of Charmed uh, where I played uh, Kirkham the Demon Alchemist. Uh, and I Googled myself and then this, this big Charmed fan and her, her on-screen name was Doherty Fan 57 she hated my performance. And on every TV message board, Television Without Pity, all of them, she would write about this guy, how he looked like a pig. He's, she called me Piggy. And then she, she dissected my performance, like every moment of my performance. And it was, it was devastating. So, as we know that uh, search engines can be a, a double-edged sword. Uh, Friendster, remember I joined Friendster? Friendster still exists, by the way. It's still out there. It's very weird, go there and you'll see all these pictures 
of people and all these profiles, all these Friendsterites out there, and it's like wandering into the lost city of Atlantis. You know, it's like an internet ghost town with all of these people preserved, perfectly preserved in amber, amber circa 2003. It's crazy. And then, of course, I'll skip ahead and, and say that I then joined Twitter, and that uh, uh, has been quite an adventure uh, on Twitter. And I will say that, you know, Twitter is 144 characters minimum. I actually invented another website. I had the idea first. It was called Twatter. It was 140,000 character minimum to twat. And it would take you two or three days come up with a with a twad and I lost millions of dollars. <laughs> Terrible idea. But I joined Twitter and I got tens of thousands of followers uh, right away and just every day it was just like more followers and more followers. They just kept piling on, piling on. And hours would go by and I did thousands more and thousands more. It was, I, I felt like Hitler, but in a good way. And <laughs> if I were to tweet that joke, I would be in so much shit. <laughs> I would be on the cover of Huffington Post. Ray Wilson compares self to Hitler. Anyway. Which brings us to Soul. That's my history in the internet. Thank you. Which brings us to Soul Pancake. Um, let's go to the website. Here we go. Soulpancake.com. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. Um, you guys are, you're, you're lame. Seriously, you're really lame. <laughs> we put a lot of work into the anonymous, hacked, Soul Pancake website. <laughs> I had a team of people work on that for days and just got a chuckle. <laughs> Damn you. I'm going, thanks everybody. Um, by the way, I apologize for the podium. I, I feel like when I do this, I feel like I'm Tom Cruise in Magnolia, and I can't do like the TED Talks when it's like, like this, you know? Like, I feel like Deepak Chopra. I can't. It's very strange. What do you think of my talk so far? Okay, so let's talk about Soul Pancake. Why so pancake? Why the name so pancake? Everyone asks me, and, and quite simply, and it's truthfully, I say because Spirit Taco was taken, and we literally were researching domain names, uh, and we had, you know, we went to one of those domain places, and we were like, we wanted a food item with something having to do with higher thought and spirituality and philosophy and stuff like that. So I wanted originally metaphysical milkshake, but uh, that was a little too wordy, um, and so we invested, finally we came up with with so pancake. And when I was starting it, you know, I remember I was on the set of The Office, and now I'll get a little more serious with you guys. Um, and I remember Ed Helms turned to me and he said, so what's this Soul Pancake thing I, I keep hearing about? And I was like, well, it's a website that explores a creativity and spirituality. And he said, aren't those two things really mutually exclusive? And, and I thought about it long and hard, because and, I was like, no, I don't think so. But I realized that um, this isn't really a fresh idea and a fresh concept that people aren't used to thinking. So that's really one of the things that I wanted to talk about is this intersection between creativity, philosophy, and spirituality. Um, let's show a little video that I made when we first started the site. Oh, I need to go back. Aspirations are directed towards ennobling man's life 
lifting it from the sphere of mere physical existence and leading the individual towards freedom and this is a great quote by albert einstein that really aligns with my belief and what i've learned over my my long journey which i'm going to get into in a moment you have my journey of the internet but i have a couple other journeys to talk about and um because i truly believe that uh spirituality is a very corrupted word and it was a word that we needed to reinvent um and delamify because spirituality basically to me means anything having to do with the spirit and the spirit is just not the body it's connected to the body in some way shape or form but it's something anything having to do with our higher selves our higher calling that could be anything it can certainly be god and certainly religion certainly it's meditation but it's also work as service it's creating things it's uh creating art it's uh it's all of us gathered here in this room right now having this conversation anything that elevates us beyond just pooping and, and eating and, and the other things that we monkey-like beings like to do so that's that's what i wanted to engage with in, in um in soul pancake so why did we start it well i had this great opportunity presented to me like i've been acting for a long 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 time before the office happened and in total obscurity pretty much and then i had this great opportunity being a celebrity to do something interesting on the web and it was such a land of shit back then when we first started talking about it four or five years ago when we first started having conversations there um it's it's much better today actually i think the landscape on the web is much more interesting and vital and there's much more positive things but back then there was there was very little that was that was uplifting or ennobling of uh of the human condition so i saw this this great opportunity and we also thought of it as a as a service to humanity we thought of um uh you know i thought about the average office fan you know maybe there's a skinny pimply kid who lives in his parents basement in omaha and he loves the office and he's got a computer and you know what would this kid like to do what what hasn't what what hasn't been offered to him yet um what about a place to debate life's big questions, to have uh, deeper conversations with people as he's going along his life's journey? That's certainly what I would have liked when I was that age. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that journey. My, uh, like I said, uh, when, and looking back on, on the creation of Soul Pancake, I realized that there's this great intersection of my life, these three aspects of my life's journey, and that Soul Pancake, the website, is really an expression of who I am as a human being, and it, and it means a great deal to me. And it's very, it's very personal, and uh, it, it is very uh, holds an important place in my heart, and it's directly related to to my life. So, uh, on terms of the spiritual journey, I, I grew up a member of the Baha'i faith. My parents are Baha'is. I'm, I'm currently a Baha'i, and um, there are a couple of teachings of the Baha'i faith that were integral to the creation of Soul Pancake. One of my favorite principal teachings in the faith is the individual investigation of truth. This is that every human being has the obligation to find the truth for themselves. It's not the truth of their parents. It's not the truth of whatever clergy member they, they worship under. It's, it's not even the truth of people on the web that they meet or, or what the cool kids are doing or what the cool current belief is in the groundwater. It's really finding the truth for yourself and going on that journey. And this was very instilled in me. Um, and I spent a long time when I left the Baha'i faith and was a complete atheist and going crazy and then kind of came back to it. And that's, that's another long story. But uh, I thought that this was uh, a very precious and important teaching. And uh, Soul Pancake is kind of a, a, a reflection of that. There's another great teaching in the Baha'i faith um, this is a quote from the son of the founder of the Baha'i faith, Abdul Baha. I rejoice to hear that thou hast taken pains with thine art, for in this wonderful new age, art is worship. Art is worship. The more thou strivest to perfect it, the closer wilt thou come to God. What bestowal could be greater than this, that one's art should be even as the act of worshiping the Lord? That is to say, when thy fingers grasp the paintbrush, it is as if thou wert at prayer in the temple. So here's a new thought. A new thought that creating things, and art is all kinds of websites are art. You know, the act of creating something, certainly the act of creating something so that it makes beauty or provides service in the world, is an act of worship. And 
it's just as important as kneeling in a temple or praying or meditating or something like that. And this was also a really vital part of my, uh, of my spiritual journey and an inspiration for Soul Pancake. Now, my philosophical journey is a little different. Um, I had a great books class uh, in high school, and uh, it was truly awesome. And see, I wanted to be a philosopher. I went to go uh, to Tufts University to study philosophy. I really wanted to study it. And I took some philosophy classes, and I was just bored out of my skull. It was so dry and academic. And I just realized that, wait, philosophy is so disconnected from what it's meant to be. It's meant to be, this is what I believe in life, and this is the, the credo that I have, and this is how I see the world and reality and perception and, and whatnot, and I will then live my life in accordance with what I believe that I have discovered through a debating of the, of the facts and the evidences and from what I read, but that um, vitality has really been lost and it's just become a really dumb academic exercise in my mind. So that was something else I wanted to, to re-explore. But I had this amazing great books class in high school. We spent a year just reading great books. And we read Nietzsche and Kant and, and uh, uh, Herman Melville and the books of the Bible and you name it, all kinds of things to get a Nietzsche, a bunch of perspectives. And all we would do is debate life's big questions. And my teacher, Raisa Landor, she put this, she put it in a very interesting way. She said that, you know, it's continuing the conversation. It's an ongoing conversation that has been had since the dawn of time. Since human beings gathered around in caves to the ancient Greeks, this conversation of who are we? Why are we here? Do we have souls? Is there a God? Do we have free will? What is love? What is the purpose of it all? That this ongoing conversation has been happening since the dawn of time. But I didn't really see a place on the web for that to continue that conversation. So that was a great inspiration. And the capper is, she uh, got in touch with me a few years ago. No, I want to say first that as you would get, you would get an A in the class if you could prove that God didn't exist, and that's absolutely true. And and two guys, Randy came in and Jay Green, uh, actually did. They succeeded in proving that God does not exist. So, and they got A's. So in case you're wondering, there's no God. Uh, <laughs> There's, there's my great books teacher, Raisa Landor. She's now a contributor to Soul Pancake. Wait, how do I, oh, I click on it. Now I'm going online. She has a column called The Corner with Rain Wilson's English teacher. Look at this. Do you fear death? Montaigne, a 16th century French philosopher, asserts the purpose of philosophy is to teach one not to fear death. Blah, blah, blah. It's just like back being in high school. And then um, <laughs> people post, and um, they're talking about life after death with my high school English teacher. So there is my philosophical journey uh, brought to life. Okay, good. How's it going? Any questions? I don't care. Shut up. <laughs> so my um, my artistic journey was uh, was was quite different. I um, uh, you know a lot of you you know me from my TV comedy show, but uh, when I was an aspiring student actor, I really was uh, an experimental theater actor, and I loved. Uh, and the crazier and weirder the theater experience was, the more I loved it. I remember when I was an undergrad, uh, I we had a, instead of spring break, I didn't go home for spring break. I went to this uh, church off campus where they had brought over uh, a woman who was Polish. I forget her name. She didn't speak a word of English, and she was a theater director and teacher from Poland, where she worked with Jerzy Grotowski. And they had a theater company out in the woods. They would just go out in the woods. And they would do these strange ritualistic plays that would go on sometimes for days. And uh, she was there to teach us theater, but she didn't speak any English. So we just went in the church from like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and locked the doors. And we had drums and scarves and water and some oranges. And, and we would just see what would happen. We would literally sit around. It's a little weird. 
we would just sit around and wait for something to happen. Maybe someone would sneeze, and then we'd look at that, and maybe the act of looking at that kind of created that. And we would create these theater pieces. They were like all day long ceremony improvisation. It was like a little mini Burning Man. Um, and it was, it was absolutely fascinating for a 19-year-old, and I loved this stuff. I really wanted to immerse myself in, in this stuff. I, uh, uh, later I did a, 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 a workshop with Andre Gregory, who's famous for the movie My Dinner with Andre, and he's an experimental theater director, and we would, we would walk in circles for like 45 minutes, the whole ensemble. We would just walk in a circle over, I have no idea why we did that. But we would do that, and every once in a while we would change directions. It was very intense. And, you know, it was, it was really pretentious, and it was really strange, but at the same time it was really exciting, because we really felt like, oh, we could change the world with the power of theater. It was like an evangelical, um, well, it was a little cult-like, too, <laughs> as I think about it. But it was really exciting. We did these plastiques with him where you would isolate your body parts. Anyone here do plastiques? Anybody? Plastiques? Not a hand. Um, you isolate body parts. I have the mic on. You isolate your body parts. You find the perfect gesture for your hand and then for your wrist and your elbow. And so you have to get adept at gesturing. Your shoulder has lots of different expressions like this for communication. Your pelvis. It's true. Uh, we would do that. We'd stand and we would gesture our pelvises at each other. It was very weird. I'm glad no one videotaped it. Uh, and then I went to acting school in New York. We uh, did juggling and circus skills, uh, clowning, mask work, period dance movement exercises. And it was it was a wonderful, wonderful time. I, I did workshop with a renowned theater director, Richard Schechner, in the downtown on the Lower East Side. And we would have these squares marked out, kind of like on this stage. And every square had an emotion. And as you moved from square to square, you had to fully embody the emotion. So they're like, this would be grief, and people would be here, and then joy, and people would be dancing and moving around, and just completely, um, Anthony and Artaud called it theater artists, the acrobats of the soul. So we were trying to be acrobats of the soul. It was like walking through a, an insane asylum. Um, but it was really cool. Here's Anthony and Artaud. I just wanted to do this because I wanted to read it in an accent. The race of prophets is extinct. Europe is becoming set in its ways, slowly embalming itself beneath the wrappings of its borders, its factories, its law courts, and its universities. I sound like Schwarzenegger. The frozen mind cracks between the material staves which close upon it. The fault lies in your moldy systems. Your logic of two plus two equals four. The fault lies with you, chancellors, caught in the net of syllogisms. You manufacture engineers, magistrates, doctors who know nothing of the true mysteries of the body or the cosmic laws of existence, false scholars blind outside this world, philosophers who pretend to reconstruct the mind. The least act of spontaneous creation is a more complex, revealing world than any metaphysics. Thank you. <laughs> so, Soul Pancake unites all of these things. There's a tweet I did a while back, thought it was appropriate. So let's talk about Soul Pancake. What does it actually do? Well, it is, um, it, we, we originally started it and we wanted it to be a content site. We wanted to uh, provide interviews, perspectives, uh, creative challenges for people to do. That we would be providing the, the content and then the users would be using it. And maybe they would have comment boards on it, maybe a little more like the Huffington Post, about mainly more specific topics. And then we, um, we had this other section of like interactivity that we had built, and at the, up to the very last minute, we had no idea what to do with it. We were like, "What the hell are we going to do to have the users? Should we have them upload pictures? We've we seen that before. Uh, you know, what do we do?" And then we came to the conclusion, literally a week or two before we were going to launch, that this would be a great place for something we call the Question Collective, the life's big questions. People to post any life's big question that they have and to interact, I just burped a little bit. Did you see that? <laughs> was I shown really big? Because I kind of had, had a little throat bubble. If yeah, this is going to be on YouTube, can you cut that out, throat bubble? Anyone? I hate you guys. Um, no, I don't. I want to hug every one of you. Um, 
So, and now, interestingly enough, we've kind of shifted this from life's big questions and the question collective to um, a, a conversation, life's big conversations uh, based on questions. Let me see here. What is this? Here are things, here are things we try and do on Soul Pancake. We try and always find the intersection of between something positive, creative, and thought-provoking. If, if we hit all three sectors in this, then we're, then we're doing all right. So we've tried to do in our book, which was a New York Times bestseller, and now we have a production company. It's, uh, I'll talk about it in a little bit. Can I click on this? Start a conversation. Here's the page. Start a conversation about, these are some real life things on the web. Do you judge your day by how much you have accomplished? Do we own the human race or does the human race own us? Is, origin is originality a moving target? Defining anxiety in 10 words? Anyway, so you get the idea. So we're having deeper conversations about the human experience. We didn't want it to be a place where people talked about Justin Bieber or a Kardashian, and, and they didn't talk about sports teams, uh, and they weren't snarky. One of the great benefits of Soul Pancake that I really loved is how diverse the audience is. We have born-again Christians, and atheists, and Buddhists, and Baha'is, and agnostics, and everyone in between from all over the world engaging in really um, respectful conversations with each other. Very few uh, trolls and, uh, and very little snark. And uh, that's been really wonderful to see. What do I do now? I go here. What else? That's a urinal. <laughs> it looks like a face. Isn't that funny? So I took a picture in it. I, I forget if I picture, took a picture before or after I peed in that. People are like, Ugh. oh yeah, tell me. Like you don't look in the, you don't spend hours gazing into urinals. <laughs> Please, give me a break. Oh, here's a life's big question I posed. What should I say about Soul Pancake at South by Southwest this Saturday? I'm giving a talk for 1,500 tech web branding social media advertising nerds at South by Southwest Interactive called The View From Rain. It's going to be about my spiritual and artistic journey, my history of the internet and creation of Soul Pancake, the website and the brand. Anything you want communicated, help a brother out. There's so many important things to say that speaking on tolerance and understanding would be the most influential in the implementation of change, especially in our tech-savvy existence. I know it sounds hockey. Bad spelling! <laughs> I know it sounds hockey. How, can we ban her from the site? <laughs> uh, but love thy neighbor and thy, labor, thy, thy neighbor will be infected with the positive change that this world so desperately deserves and needs, etc., etc. Soul Pancake is a way for people to broaden their intellectual horizons. Written by Schrudedit two days ago, and there's that is a, a toddler is posting on Soul Pancake. <laughs> this site allows me to be completely open to who I am and the ideas that I create. It's something that is personal but can be shared with others in order to find a connection in the world. Everyone feels alone deep down. That's interesting. Everyone feels alone deep down. I believe that. And this site shows people that others feel the same way. The more positivity that we put out in the world, the less room negativity has to grow. You know, it's interesting about that positivity. We were, um, my wife and was talking about my son, and uh, he's, he's seven years old, and he loves to build things and create things. He writes books and he makes inventions, and he uh, always loves to show them to us. Just like, uh, oh, dad and mama, you've got to see this new thing. And she was reading in a, in a book about parenting about how it's a sign of a healthy child that when they have something that they love and they care about, that they want to show it to people, that they want to share it with people. And I think that's a really uh, beautiful, a beautiful thought. And uh, you know, the dysfunctional child or the, the child that's been traumatized in some way, maybe they have something they love, but they don't, they don't have that ability to share it. So providing an opportunity for people to share what's important to them and what they love. This one's written by I'm Barbie, you bitches, so I'm going to skip that. <laughs> Videotaping. Um, 
you might mention great wisdom comes in the wee hours while sitting at the computer in your jammies from total strangers to the universal family of soul pancake i enjoy the slightly off the mainstream chatter that goes on here it's comfortable and oddly familiar i actually think about some of these things myself we could do some fairly awesome things in a real and actual community think about that in the wee hours then get back to me and i'll, I'll explain cocooning to you i don't know <laughs> So Pancake is like the back seat of the school bus. It's where all the cool kids hang out. Awesome. So, let's see what else we have here. Here's an interesting slide. <laughs> the website Gets a million page views per month, 100,000 comments per month, 5,000 user-generated questions per month, 60,000 Twitter, Facebook following, 50,000 newsletter. You know, you get the idea. That means we're, we're pretty small, but uh, we're doing okay. Because, anyway. So now we're moving more into production as a company and a brand, and I wanted to share some of that with you. We've been doing these pieces for the Oprah Winfrey Network. Uh, we also are launching this summer, very excited to be launching one of these new premium YouTube channels. And uh, we're really excited about that. It's going to be on the uh, art, science, and education uh, band. And it'll be our own channel, and we're being given a really awesome budget to be able to create our own stuff. It's like Soul Pancake is going to become like a mini network. Um, but we've been doing this great stuff with the Oprah Winfrey Network and possibly a pilot with them for a TV show very soon. This is where the thing is, and this is where the thing is. So I thought I'd show you a little something that we've been doing. We've been taking a life's big questions or life's big conversations um, off of the screen and off of the web and out into the street, out into the real world, engaging with real people out on the sidewalk and trying to uh, enlighten and inspire and uh, challenge and thought provoke. And here's a recent one we did. This is not aired yet, so you're in for a real treat. Um, it's called Heart Attack, and we went to the streets of Venice to see how people would react to be um, attacked by a bunch of roving hearts. something that I said earlier, and that was that kid in Omaha, the pimply skinny kid who lives in his parents' basement, you remember that kid? Um, you know, I think that we have uh, a really exciting opportunity to think about 
that pimply kid. And, uh, you know, sometimes the individual investigation of truth can go too far. Remember that concept that I talked about? You know, people uh, can go too far. And you think about that kid, and maybe he's writing really snarky reviews on any cool news, and, uh, you know, the internet can bring out the very best in people, it can also bring out the worst of people. Maybe he's spending too much time with really strange porn from Germany and Florida. And uh, we, our job here is, all of us, I believe, is to call on our higher selves to lift that kid up, to inspire him, to empower him. He's who we do it for, is that pimply skinny kid. And it's interesting because this is such a new revelation. You know, I've talked about my history through the internet, but 16 years ago, none of this that's happening on the web is, would be possible. It, it just it just didn't exist. I mean, how did people connect over ideas? How did they connect over what they loved? I mean, fanzines? I mean, I remember, and this is a true story, I went to a record store in 1986, and I loved R.E.M. And I went into this record store, and they had an, an REM fanzine. I had never seen a fanzine before. And I was 20 years old, and I bought this REM fanzine. And here it was. Here there were a group of people in, in Decatur, Georgia, or Athens, Georgia, or somewhere, that were writing about their love of REM. And they had the lyrics, and they did artwork inspired by REM, and they had essays about it, and information about the concept. It was literally Xerox on pieces of typing paper and, and stapled on the corner, and I paid like $2.95 for it. And I was so moved. I remember spending hours with this fanzine because their music and their first couple, especially CDs, or what was it, CDs back then? Cassettes uh, from Columbia House Records and Tapes uh, were really, really important to me. And I loved the lyrics and how obscure it was and how dark and, and strange that it was, and I loved Michael Stipe and everything that he, he stood for, and to just read like, wow, there are people out there who feel the same way that I do. I had no idea that such a thing could exist, but this is how I had to communicate it, it was from getting this kind of stapled, mimeographed piece of paper. But, you know, going back to the kid in Omaha, you know, our, our, our job, really, our challenge, really, is Again, how do we inspire this kid? A lot of people in, in the web, you know, their goal is to enslave people. They just want them at their computers. This is, this is what we should be wary of, is we want to keep people at their computers, we want them clicking on our ads, we want page throughs, we want uh, amount of time spent and page views, and uh, we want them to buy things from the ads that are on our site and promote and tell all their friends. So in a sense, we want to enslave them to their computers. And while certainly making money is, is crucial, and uh, you know, fortunately I have a day job, so I don't have to worry about that so much. Although, we'd certainly love to make Soul Pancake profitable, so if anyone has any ideas about that, let us know. Because we sure don't. Um, but I believe that the internet is the future 